Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Today I will have a look at a molecule which is involved in some of the core processes in the body, including bone and muscle health and the regulation of hormones, and yet it's hardly ever talked about. The molecule is geronyl geronyl, and as in so many other molecules, it goes down with age and may be part of the reason for osteoporosis and sarcopenia. Let's have a look at it in more detail. This is geronyl geronyl, which is a dye turpin. The name is a bit of a mouthful, so I will stick to calling it GG from now on. It is an underappreciated molecule as it forms part of some of the key metabolites in plants and mammals, including humans. It is the tail on vitamin K2. Vitamin K2 is also known as menaquinone, and the tail can be of varying length. The different forms are named after the number of isoprene units in the tail. Common forms are MK7 and MK4. MK4 is the only form made in humans and requires GG. It is made by attaching GG to the end of a vitamin K1. CoQ10 is a key enzyme which serves many functions, but particularly in the generation of ATP in the mitochondria as an essential part of the electron transport chain. It has a tail which is made of two and a half GG molecules. So why is GG important? For this, we need to get into a little biochemistry. The mevalonate pathway is an ancient and well-conserved pathway, which in humans produces many essential biomolecules, such as cholesterol, vitamin K, CoQ10, and steroid hormones, such as testosterone and estrogen. GG is one of the metabolites that sits at a junction on the mevalonate pathway. One of the main functions of this pathway is making cholesterol. Now, cholesterol gets itself a bad name, but it is critical to our health and used throughout the body. I will come back to why this is important in a second. If this pathway does not branch to make cholesterol, it can continue down to create GGPP, GG pyrophosphate, which is the active form of GG. From here, GG can be used in the synthesis of CoQ10. Although we can get some CoQ10 from our diet, the majority comes from internal synthesis. The tail of CoQ10 is two and a half units of GG, and GG is required to make CoQ10. CoQ10 levels tend to drop with age, and given CoQ10's central role in the generation of ATP, this can lead to less than effective mitochondria, which can be particularly problematic for the heart as it is always active. Supplementing with CoQ10 is possible, but is less effective than using GG, as it has better absorption than the much larger CoQ10. GG is also required for the manufacture of menaquinone 4, a form of K2, which is made from K1, and as mentioned, the only form of K2 manufactured in the body. MK4 is critical in bone health. It directs calcium to where it should go in bones and teeth and not where it shouldn't in the soft tissues, such as blood vessels and the kidney. GG is critical in protein synthesis and post-translational modification in a process called prenylation, where a GG or a phonocell unit is attached to a protein. This is required for proper operation of many processes, including the synthesis of other proteins, which is why skeletal muscle protein synthesis requires GG. Although the mechanism is less clear, GG is also involved in the synthesis of testosterone. We will see that in the clinical trial, it was able to raise low T levels in men. GG goes down with age, and so it may help to supplement with it. Another key factor is the use of statins. Statins are common drugs which are prescribed for high cholesterol and are used by 90 million people in the US and maybe 200 million people worldwide. Statins work by inhibiting HMG-CoA reductase, the master regulator of the mevalonate pathway, which blocks the pathway here. This works well as its primary function, as it stops the production of cholesterol, leading to lower cholesterol in the body, which is what we want. However, it also blocks the rest of the pathway, including the synthesis of GG and its downstream products, CoQ10, MK4, and impacts GG's other functions in protein synthesis. GG has not been greatly studied, but let's have a look at some of the data for it. 
We'll start off by having a look at the clinical trial paper that was recently published. A note that the benefits may be clearer in the case of a person taking statins, but I will only touch on this peripherally today. GG is extracted from the Anato plant, a native of South America. This is the same plant which provides the delta tocotrienol version of vitamin E. As we have discussed, it is key to the synthesis of K2 and CoQ10 in humans. It has been shown to reduce pain and inflammation in preclinical trials. However, there have not been safety trials in humans. So this was an eight-week randomized controlled trial with two doses, 150 milligrams and 300 milligrams orally. The intervention group started with 150 milligrams, then escalated to 300 milligrams after four weeks, which is halfway through the trial. There were 66 participants aged between 30 and 49, and they were healthy. One of the key aims of the study was to show safety in humans, so they checked many blood markers, including the sex hormones, but found no significant changes. They did see that for those with low testosterone, there was a significant increase in the total free and bioavailable testosterone. This analysis was done after the data was collected, which is not best practice, though it does provide interesting information. The conclusion is that GG was shown to be safe and may help with low testosterone in males, which we mentioned earlier. So far, this is the only human trial of GG that I can find. So let's have a quick look at a couple of preclinical trials to see what they found. This is one from the University of Texas, where they were looking to see if GG helped improve glucose control and bone quality in obese mice. First, so bone is being continuously broken down and recreated. The amount and quality of bone that we have is driven by the balance of these two processes. Also, type 2 diabetes is associated with poorer quality bone. In this graph, LFD is mice on a low-fat diet, in effect, the control mice. HFD is high-fat diet mice, which have type 2 diabetes. And GG is HFD mice, which have been given 800 milligrams per kilogram of diet of GG. CTX is a metabolite in blood serum, which is related to bone breakdown or resorption. So a higher level shows higher breakdown. We can see that with GG, this is lower. It also improved the quality of the bone. This table is looking at the femur. CT.TH is cortical thickness, a measure of the structural thickness of the bone. And at the bottom row is showing bone stiffness, which is also improved significantly. The authors think this was due to reduced inflammation. Type 2 diabetes is also associated with reduced glucose control. In the same study, they did a glucose tolerance test. We can see that the glucose levels in the serum, as well as the area under the curve, were much less for the mice treated with GG. Another study looked at the impact of GG on muscle fatigue in mice who were being fed statins. Although the primary goal was to see if it would reverse the muscle effects of the statins, GG also helped with the muscle performance in the control mice who were not actually taking statins. As far as I'm aware, the only source of GG is American River Nutrition, which has a product called GG Gold. They do not sell directly to consumers, but provide their products to partners for distribution. The American River Nutrition website has a page which lists all their partners. American River also provides a Delta tocotrienol based vitamin E supplement to their partners, and the page does not show which partner is offering which kind of product, as far as I could see. From my research, I found these three, Extend Life, Sunergetic, and Healthy Bones and Company have GG Gold based products. Please note that I have no affiliation with any of these companies. As an example, a quick look at Extend Life. They offer a pure GG product. The other companies had a mix of GG and Delta Tocotrienol, as far as I could see. This bottle contains 30 capsules, each of which has 150 milligrams of GG. You may recall that in the human trial, the two doses tried were 150 and 300 milligrams per day. For reference, the bottle costs about USD 45 when I check their website. I think GG looks very interesting, though at the moment there really isn't 
that much data on it. And some of that is looking at GG as a way to mitigate the impact of statins. Although that is a very important role, given the number of people who are taking statins, which continues to increase. In summary, it helps support CoQ10, K2, and testosterone synthesis in the body, and is critical in some protein synthesis, as well as being anti-inflammatory. So this helps it to support bone and muscle growth, and from there to be able to help with the heart. So thank you for your attention, and I wish you all well.